here. It's Holly here from Your Past is a Gift. Okay, so in this video, I wanted to talk about the actual bully, okay, and how the bully is created. Now, as we touched on previously, and I have spoken about this in previous videos, a bully comes from a home, you know, where he feels that he has no, this bully feels that they have no power. It can be he or she, I shouldn't just specify it's a he. Um, they have no power, okay? And they're constantly watching these grown-ups be bullies at home. They're either bullying him, you know, making him feel that, you know, that this bully, that they're less. And so, because you're the child in the home and you're surrounded by these grown-ups, you have no say. You can't really speak up and defend yourself. But they're not going to listen to you, you know? So, the grown-ups are the ones that are running the house. And you have to deal with whatever's in your house. Okay, so the first step for you is to understand that, you know, as the person that's being bullied, okay, that what you have in your home is not what everybody has in theirs. Most important thing to understand, okay, because chances are you come from a home with two loving parents that are kind, and that are good to each other, and they show you the same. They're kind to you, and they're good to you, you know, and there is no bullying going on. There's no power play. You don't have one adult putting down the other or being physically violent with the other or all these things. But you have to understand that in the world, there are homes like that where there are two adults in the home and one of them is being physically violent or physically abusive or all these things that you don't have in your home. Okay? This is where the bully comes from. They have to witness this every single day. These two adults. The bullying starts at home. Between the adults at home. Okay, this bully may even be bullied at home by one of the grown-ups, by one of the adults. As a child being picked on by this grown-up constantly. And they go out into the world and they look for someone, they look for themselves in you. Okay, this grown-up's doing this to me and I can see myself in you, I'm gonna pick you. Because at home with these grown-ups, I'm too little, I don't have the power to stand up for myself, to tell them to stop, that I don't like it, that this isn't the way you should be treating another human being. I don't have any say in my home. But then I go out into the world and out there, I'm bigger than you. I can be, I can copy, yeah? Photocopy, so they photocopy that, <laughs> gone out into the world, they're a photocopy of what's going on in their home. And that's what you've got to think of. They've gone out into the world and they're just copying what they have to put up with at home. This is very important for you to understand because the day you get that, you can start to have compassion for that person. You can start to have sympathy. You can start to feel sorry for them and it's probably not what they want, but at least you can start to understand, oh, this is where they're coming from. It doesn't fix your problem though, because you're being bullied. Because they see something in your eyes that you feel that you're less and it's there and you can't hide it. Just like their anger is there in their eyes that they have to find someone to let that out on. There's this anger, this, this spitefulness, this I don't have power there and I can't say stop it, I don't like it, and you shouldn't be doing that. I have no say there, no power at all. They have to go out into the world. There's, in their eyes, there's that anger, this spite, you know, that oh, I have to live with that. I have to find someone else and do that to them. That's my way of letting it out. That this is how I'm feeling all the time. This is how I'm made to feel all the time. That's, what, that's where they're coming from. That's what they're doing. The problem is they pick on you because in your eyes, you don't have their anger. You have this... I'm less than you, I'm less than, 
I'm not good enough. I'm not as good as. And many times, you won't even look others in the face. You won't even look straight at them. Like I said, a lion will always look straight at you. No fear. Doesn't care. I'm a lion. Deal with it. And that's what you have to learn. But you can only learn that when you know who you are. And you stop thinking all these things that you're not. And focusing on that. Stop thinking that you're not this, you're not that, you're not the other. What's that going to fix? These thoughts, okay, let's say we stay with that. Say you keep believing that you're not something or you're not the other or whatever. Say it's the, you're not attractive enough. How can you fix that? You look the way you look. You can't change that unless you go and have plastic surgery. Is it that bad? That you need to go have plastic surgery to look like everyone else? Do we need to all look like clones? Of someone else that's supposed to be the perfect handsome, the perfect beautiful? Think about it. <laughs> because to me, growing up, my dad was the most beautiful human, human being I had ever seen. And it had nothing to do with what he looked like on the outside. Yeah, he was handsome. He wasn't the most handsome. But he was such a loving human being that that's all I saw was the love. And his eyes always sparkled with love and his smile, everything about him. To me, he was the most beautiful human being as I was growing up. You see, to be the most beautiful has nothing to do with all this outside stuff. It doesn't. Because you could look at your mum or you could look at your dad. My daughter looks at me like I'm the most amazing thing on the planet. <laughs> and I'm sure it's not because I'm the most beautiful one at school, because there are other mums that look much nicer than I do, you know, much prettier than me. But the love I have for her and the love that shows through my eyes, she's not going to get that from anyone else. And she knows that. And that's what makes me beautiful to her. Same with my husband, when he looks at me with that love, it makes him the most beautiful human being to me. But it's the love inside. It's got nothing to do with what he looks like physically or what I look like physically to my daughter. It's the love that's in here. And I'm sure if you think about it, and you think about either your mum or your dad, and if you know what that love is, then you know in yourself, oh, they're the most beautiful human being I've ever known. And you'll know it's not because they are the most attractive. It's got nothing to do with that. All right? So I want you to start thinking about that today. Give yourself a little bit of love for who you are. Start looking at what you are, who you are. What makes you special? And it's not all the stuff that they teach you out there. It's not all that. If there's love in your heart, if there's kindness in your heart, you've got a kind soul, you have something to give to others. That's what makes you beautiful. It's got nothing to do with anything else. But anyway, in the next few videos, we're going to talk about, well, if this is what it is, how can we change it? How can we fix it? You know? And we'll come, okay, and we'll work through it. And we'll see how we can get to the bottom of it. That you can stop having those thoughts of, I'm not that. They're thoughts of lack. I'm not that, and I'm not that, and I'm not well, what are you? Because you must be something. Everyone is something. All right? That's what I need you to start thinking about. What do you have inside of you? That makes you special. All right? I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the messages. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.